Well, it's finally here. To be honest, it feels like yesterday, but on the other hand, the longest wait ever for the first major of the year. Of course, we are talking the Masters and I have two very familiar faces who join me from Augusta right now, having the time of their lives already, I can only assume, Steve Elkington and Frank Bassett from Golf Talk America. I'm very jealous. Are you guys having fun? I don't know. Are we? We are. Yes, and very yes, much. Yeah, it's great. Very much. Oh, it's, um, it, it's always, but, you know, Elk, you... But I'm sorry to interrupt, you, but you're not here with us no. right here on this stage. And we missed that. I wish. I we miss you hitting golf balls off of my front porch <laughs> across the street here. That was so oh, wow. <laughs> that feels like a lifetime ago. Hey, if there's any, if you guys ever have spare tickets that you want to throw my way, I'll be there in a flash. It doesn't take me long to drive. Well, come on. I have one. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> um, right, okay, so Elk, paint the picture because obviously, you know, you being a major champion, you get the privilege of going to the Masters every single year. You really enjoy the week. You get to take your son Sam with you. You've got some other friends that you take with you. Um, it's, a, it's a real standout week on the calendar every single year. Yeah, I spent the day there yesterday, Diane, got to see sort of everything in the preliminary start of the week guys were arriving the course is perfect right now that they're, they're, it's very dry they've had a sort of a cool late the, the bloom is gone there's no there's no blooms this year that's over with um and then they had a, a patch of cool dry weather so the course is very dry and running and firm however there's rain on the forecast for thursday which is a little concerning because a lot of people here are talking about we'd really like to see a firm golf course let's hope that kind of misses everything yeah. but <clears throat> Diane, this is a very unusual uh, Masters, meaning that the players this year, we've got the live guys coming back, of course, and that's exciting. I'll, I'll talk about some of the things I saw about that yesterday. Um, <clears throat> but this year we have one player, Scotty Scheffler, that ranks so far ahead of everyone else sort of statistically. When every one of these players arrive on the first tee on Thursday, Diane, they sort of carry with them a handicap to sort of what have they been doing form-wise, how are they playing now? What statistics have they compiled at this tournament? What have they done all year? And Scotty Scheffler, Diane, is right there with Tiger in 2000, actually even ranks better than his statistics in 2000. He is a whopping five strokes better on strokes gain than the guy who finishes top 10 in the Masters every year. And he's two strokes better than the guy I ranked second, which is Alexander Schauffele, which is a half a stroke a day better than the second guy. So it's Scotty Scheffler's tournament to lose at this point. And we're going to talk about all that a little bit. But let me ask you this, off of the statistics, is it true, and you would know this, in the past, because we don't have the gorgeous azaleas blooming like they normally are, did they actually put ice in all of the beds? They don't do ice. There'd be too much ice. There's too much. There'd be too much ice. But they, ice the, the rumors they used to do that. They used no, to put ice in the beds a, to, myth, to stop the blooming. But, but, I, but I, yeah, that's a myth. But they do have a nursery in the back. Where I drove around there yesterday to look at the nursery, and I think what they do do is that they get areas that they'd like to, uh, let's call it uh, enhance. Okay, that well they said. Pop it in. Just put some new ones in and just seeing that are getting ready to. Well, you, you being such a horticulturist as you are, I mean, you are. You're I am. I am. Careful. <laughs> but it's true. Did he knows a lot do, about that stuff. I do a lot. Yeah, there's no ice. And okay. there's well, a, it was a rumor. Well, there's a lot of rumors because there's a lot of um, tricks that the members of Augusta National have up their sleeves. You know, the, everyone who's on that committee getting this course in pristine shape year after year, but we will never know the truth. Um, there's always rumors going around about how they operate things behind the scenes and these underground tunnels. And um, I, I was in tunnels. I was in tunnels yesterday. <laughs> yes, I, I, was in, I was in tunnels yesterday. <gasps> under the golf course. Oh, yeah. I was under, I was under. Well, they got that idea of my understanding. Now, tell me if this is true. The idea for that was how Disney distributes yeah. product 
on their properties. Yeah, and to move people freely across exactly across the center of the wheel. Right. Build and that's how here. they um, replenish the merchandise as well, because you never see golf carts driving around packed with no. hats or sweaters. They would need more than golf carts. Or, yeah. At, at the Players' Championship, you get run over by golf carts that are yeah. running around with product and ice. Ice, again, ice. But Why is it with you so, and ice today? Uh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> There's a new, there's a new um, VIP um, experience this year called the Flag and Bleeding and Ball flag. or something. It's yeah. Mac and Flag, $17,000 yeah. for a ticket to the Map and Flag. I uh, have two available to me here. Oh, yeah. Diane, come on. I'm telling you. Don't. No, he doesn't. But yes, No, I really do. That's a Marcus offered him up. Oh, that's a tunnel across yeah. to a different – it's not even on campus. So yeah. it's, it's off under – the Washington Avenue to a different part of the really uh, Augusta project. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fabulous from what I understand. I'll get to see it tomorrow. I mean, look at you. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going. Know. I'm you going, are. baby. I've never met anyone that for such a prolonged period of time is like top of this social ladder. Like you are invited to everything. You get to go everywhere. You're just because you're such a nice person, Frank. Well, thank you. I, I don't get to go everywhere, and I, I miss my favorite person. And I have to say this on on your show: you look fabulous. You get better oh. looking every year, young lady. Is it you the really ice? do. They it must be the they ice. Pack, do they, they pack, pack her in ice? Pack is that what it is? Yeah, or, that's what it is. She has, she's her feet are in ice buckets. Her is that who is? She's blooming. <laughs> she's blooming. That's right. You're making me blush. Uh, right. Well, let's get back to the course. Obviously, you spoke about this new hospitality experience that they have, and I saw the pictures on Instagram. Um, but what other changes do you see on property? I talked to a bunch of members yesterday that I just happened to know or run into, and I asked them specifically what other changes. They've, they've lengthened hold number two and pulled the, the par five. They've pulled the tee back about 10 yards and made it closer, if you will, to the first green. So they'll have to actually hook the ball more to get it around the corner. They felt like, the, the committee felt like it was getting too easy for the guys to rip it around the corner. So they'll have to turn it more now to get it down there, which, you know, the thing about Augusta is we've seen changes at 11 where they moved all the trees off the right, right side and put them on the left side. Then they put three big pines in the middle of the fairway. They they like to give you a shot at it. Mm -hmm. They don't just block you out. And Well, the 10 yards back, uh, did, did they move it just straight back, or straight did they move it to the left? To the left a little, yeah. so that gives you the more, you got to draw more around, angle. The, around the, Okay, but um, I've not but, seen that yet. But you know, Diane, basically, you know, this tournament is about you know what is the green conditions, firmness wise. There's not much rough. They've they've decided years ago that when they put a bunch of rough in, and players, you know, reacted to that, they found out that. Having no rough, when a guy hits it offline, the ball will just keep scampering off and run down into the worst spot. So they've they've gone back to that, which makes sense to me. Um, this whole tournament revolves around what's going to happen on Thursday with the rain. If we get an yep. inch of rain, it's going to spoil this beautifully firm course they have right now because right now it's setting up to be a very difficult Masters right now. Very, very firm green. Okay. Hey, man, you mentioned at the top of the show that it's – um. It's a bit of an unknown Masters this year, um, and it's maybe a little bit of a coin toss. We're going to dive into some names, some picks, some stats. We have the Live Guys back in action. Um, there's a whole pile of them that are playing this week. I know that you spent some time with Bryson DeChambeau yesterday. You know, obviously, John Ram is back, Dustin Johnson, uh, Cam Smith, who's always played well here, Brooks Kepka. Um, so we have a lot of major players back in the game this week. Um, Joaquin Neiman, who again has played well here, is in great form right now on live. So all these names back in the mix and it adds this new kind of competitive element. But some of these guys, we haven't been watching their games as closely and we don't have all the stats. Yeah, but I have been watching and um, I'm sort of slotting guys. You know, Neiman's won the Australian Open. He won on live. I'm watching that and I'm sort of... In my mind, I'm sort of thinking parallel. Where would he be if he was playing this well on tour? And I'm sort of slotting him into the top 10 and so on. Yeah. There's sort of five, what I'm calling five big dogs this week, Diane, in my in my thinking. And then there's about another dozen guys that are 
in the dog pound that are chasing down these big dogs. And these big five big dogs, we're going to talk about them, they're going to have to falter to let these guys in because the gap, I was telling Frank of this a minute ago, when you come to the Masters, Diana, with you, when you come with your form, your putting game, your driving game and so on, it's really hard to start putting way better at the Masters than you do every other week. Yeah. It's just, it's just, that's just a fact. So we have to take those stats at value and we say, what is the gap? Where is the gap between this player and where Scheffler is? And we've got padding. We've got other guys that are in that top five. I've got Xander Schauffele right there in the big dogs. I've got John Rahm in there with the big dog, just from a competitive standpoint, plays well. And then I put two interesting names in the top five that wouldn't normally have the um, skill set. They have the skill set, but they don't have the form. One does, Hideki Matsuyama. Matsuyama, when he won the Masters here a few years ago, he was only one stroke gained putting for the week. He hit the ball superior. And the last one, this is a real surprise to you, is Rory McIlroy. It may not be a surprise to everyone, but it's a surprise because he's actually well down the board in form. But in my mind, Diane, you can be an average putter at the Masters if you're a superior ball striker and you can get back into where the where they've set these pins. And that's the key. A lot of these guys can't hit it good enough to get back to where the pins are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rory- well, you talked about a gap, though, Steve and Diane, uh, th- th- with the gap that you have between Scotty Scheffler and the others, and what you said earlier about strokes gained. He, it's a chasm. That's not a gap. It's a chasm. It's a chasm. It's his master's. Solution. It's his. Yeah. Yeah. However, his wife is heavily, heavily pregnant and due in a matter of weeks. Um, I think three weeks still her due date. But he has said that if he gets the call, then he's going to leave, no matter what position he's in. He's off. That's. Going to be expensive for a lot of people. Oh uh, yeah, if, that he, would, if he leaves, yes, including. <laughs> Incidentally, mm-hmm. on that topic, his uh, best friend and roommate this week, Sam Burns, is in the exact same position. I think his wife is due a week before uh, Meredith Scheffler, and he said the same thing that he might have to make a swift exit from Augusta National at some point if he gets the call. What one person you haven't talked about, and I want to bring this up because uh, he's so beloved here at Augusta, is Patrick Reed. Patrick Reed, I watched putting yesterday, and I'm not sure um, he's that beloved, but maybe you're just... I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we haven't talked about Tiger Woods yet. We haven't talked no, about Phil Mickelson yet. Um, but, you know, pa- Patrick Reed, I think, you know, he plays this course well. There's a certain um, knack to playing Augusta well. There's guys down this list you could make a pretty good argument for. I tell you, he's playing well, Sergio Garcia. Mm-hmm. I've beaten a playoff two, about a month ago in... Uh, Mayakoba, Neiman beat him. Uh, and then he also played well last week at a very difficult Blue Monster course on live. So we have to take all that into consideration. But I'll tell you who's playing the best from my eye yesterday. I followed Thagala with Sam Burns, and they were playing with Tom Kim. Um, Burns, I had way up here on this board. Burns is off this board for me now. He's hitting the ball terrible. He's hooking at every hole. He's either hitting a big hook or a big push. So I've moved him off my big board, out of my dog pound board, out of that right now. And I've put Fagala further up the dog pound, Frank. Wow. Oof, oof. <laughs> you know who's, you know who's – I predict he's he's crawling under the gate of the dog pound and trying to get out. Or he's going to scale the fence. He is? Is our friend Jordan Speed. Well, he's on he's, my list here. Yeah, he's, he's in stats, the bound. Yeah, his, his stats aren't too bad. Um, but think, you know what he does when he gets here? He just well, kind of, there's guys that play at Augusta that, that don't have the full package, but they've got the most important package, which is Ballesteros one, uh, I think three, mm-hmm. Jose Maria Othabel two, Crenshaw two, Larry Mize, chipping and putting experts, knows how to play the odds on every hole. Jordan has some baggage down around Amen Corner, as we know, on 12. However, he already has a green jacket, but we still have to have him in the he's in the, he's in the yeah, he's, down, Frank. Yeah, he's just trying to get out from under the gate. Yeah. That's all. Rory, of course, searching for that elusive green jacket. It's a storyline year after year. Last year, it was probably at Fever Pitch, um, and it was a huge disappointment when he missed the cut. Um, so, Rory, you said that you have added him to your – five big dogs this week. Um, you like what you're seeing from him right now? I haven't seen him uh, uh, in person yet, Diane, but 
He's going for the Grand Slam. The chances are running low. He went and flew out to Vegas to see Butch Harmon. I don't think Butch Harmon's going to do anything for his swing. I think he's going to do something for his head mm-hmm. under here. But Rory's in that category of guys that can actually – we talked at the top of the show about Scheffler up here at 12 strokes gain category, 12 strokes gain he carries wow. into this event. Rory's down here at five. So he's seven strokes. That's almost two strokes a day. Scheffler is better than him on their average as they come in. So, again, we talked about where Scheffler, will he come back or will Rory go up? Now, how does Rory achieve some – how does he get better at strokes gained? He drives it unreal. This is the perfect golf course it ever was for Rory McIlroy. So it's going to have to be in his approach and his putting. And those two are always a crapshoot. My friend, mathematician who helps me with all this, said it's like rolling three sets of snake eyes in a row of what Rory McIlroy is going to do with his putter. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't know. We just don't know. And then um, another interesting element is the first timers at Augusta National. Um, and there's some really big names that are competing in the Masters for the first time. When I say big names, prominent names on the PGA Tour right now. For example, Wyndham Clark. Can't believe that this is his first Masters tournament. Um, Akshay Batia, who put on a tremendous performance last week at the Valero. It was so exciting. Um, and he's going to be one to watch this week. Um, Matthew Pavon, who's a first-time winner, the Frenchman on the PGA Tour, Stephen Yeager, who just won a couple of weeks ago in Houston, Danny McCarthy, who had a meltdown in the playoff, uh, putting that ball in the water on 18. But look at how he played on the back nine on Sunday um, in San Antonio. So it's, um, it's interesting when you add in such a really healthy bunch of first-timers this week. I've got a little story about first-timers. I was having lunch yesterday with the only first-time winner at Augusta, who was that? Buzzy Zeller. Okay. <laughs> Second story, as I said, I was out following uh, Fagala and Burns and Tom Kim yesterday, and on 18th Green, they had little cups, little uh, wooden cups out where they think the pins would be, and I was watching Fagala part from up on top of 18 down to the Sunday Ooh. pin, Ooh. and the first one, he missed it. He, he looked, you know, he was, he was reading it, and he missed it. Went five feet left of it. Pin high, and I told the guys standing me. I said, "Now watch this." I said, "He just read that putt, what he thought was correct, and it missed five feet left. This next putt, he's going to he'll re, he'll reread it. And now he'll have learnt that. And let's see what he does with this one." And he went obviously five feet further to the right, and he, he lagged it down perfect. And that, in a nutshell, is what happens to first timers here. They cannot see, cannot appreciate, cannot understand what their eyes don't tell them because we remember in '86. Well, me and you remember in '86. We are too. Diane doesn't. When Diane when, doesn't. When, she wasn't when born. Jack was had that putt on 17, and Jackie Nicholas said, "I got it going to the left," and Jack said, "No, no, no, mm-hmm. no. It's going. It's going to that Race way. Creek that way." Okay. So, so it it yeah. takes a lot of what you you know don't see here, How- Diane. So that's what that's the big problem with first timers. How did Fuzzy do it, in your opinion? Well, Fuzzy Zeller, I've always told Sam this and everyone else that wants to listen. <clears throat> Fuzzy was probably the best putter I've ever seen. He well, could make he could make the ball top spin better than anyone I've ever seen. And he had one of the great caddies here, one of the old school caddies. Yeah. And he, and then he won in a playoff um, with a long putt. So, you know, and the course has changed. Uh, you know, they've, they've upgraded this golf course. They've, the greens have changed subtly over the years. But you just can't get it all. You just can't get all the work done, Frank, if you're a first timer. No, there's, no way. there's no way. There's no way. And we, we say this every year is that if you've never been on property, if you've never been lucky enough to be there. It's hard to appreciate through TV alone the inclines and the slopes and the undulation on the greens. I mean, I love the fact that yesterday I was watching Golf Channel and Todd Lewis was doing his report from midway up the first fairway and you just saw the slope behind him. And oh, I thought, yeah. great place to do it because if you've never been on property, it's really hard to get a feel for, you know, just how hilly it actually is. It's a tough walk for a spect for a first time spectator. Mm-hmm. It's a, they think, oh, this is going to be great, and an hour and a half in, they're panting, they're they're dying because it is very very hilly. It's just hilly. And we had an eclipse yesterday, and Augusta was giving out little paper glasses, <laughs> goggles. Did you get and some? All at two o'clock, we all looked up, and you know, it looked like a little. Um, 
banana in amongst behind the sun. It was cool. And uh, have a little uh, collector's item, you know, eclipse glasses. So I'll be able to tell my grandchildren that I was at Augusta you, when the eclipse came through. You should have worn them for the show today. I could have worn them for the show. I love when I saw they were giving them out yesterday. I thought, well, marketing genius. Obviously, they think of everything. We're not surprised. But, yes. you know, also what a cool thing to keep, like once in a lifetime memorabilia. Yeah. Um, we haven't talked about Tiger, though. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked. Let's talk oh, about Tiger. Right. Well, <laughs> well, he's got the game. He played yesterday, and, and reports uh, came in that, you know, he was played with Will Zalatoris off the back nine, and he was hitting some good shots. He, he drove the ball further than Will on a couple of holes. He hit a tree off a tee. He three-putted a hole. All the things that we hear up and around the clubhouse. But when I look at the list, Diane, and I wish I could push him up that list higher, but he starts a whopping... 11 strokes gained back of where Scotty Scheffler is and what would it take for him to get into contention? Maybe a day or two, but can he sustain it? We already heard from yeah. um, Noda Begay wrote a sort of a, I think almost a, a letter to the public the other day. He said, hey, well, you know, Tiger's, uh, I don't know if you read it, Diane, but he was talking about um, Tiger's preparing for this event as good as he can, but you do understand that his ankle is locked now, and then that's causing other problems as we go up. It was almost an apology letter. Yeah. Seemed like to me. Did you did you catch that? I did. Yeah, I did. Did, did you catch that, Diane? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that was that a preset out little? Uh, he's not going to do well, and we don't expect much. Uh, was that a? Well, I think a, that um, anyone that that follows golf and is doing a show or a podcast like this week, like this this week, expectation has to be very low. But I always think. Why is Tiger playing? Like, he's not the sort of guy that's going to tee it up if he thinks that he's just going to go out there and knock it around for two days and not really do anything. Um, his cut record, obviously, at the Masters is incredible. So his, his expectation level has to be very different to everyone else's right now in that, like, he's the competitor. And he has the opportunity to break that cut record because yeah. he's tied, I believe, right now with Freddie Couples. Right. Yeah. And executive cuts and uh, gosh, I'm going blank. And oh, well, and as Vern Lundquist asked um, Tom Weiskopf what Jack Nicholas was thinking, we don't know what Tiger Woods is thinking. No, we don't. We don't. No, so, absolutely not. And by the way, you mentioned Vern Lundquist. This is his last, final. its final farewell yep. at Augusta National. And of course, Jackie Burke, who passed away, yeah, Mr. Burke. Burke. he'll be honored tonight at the at the champions dinner, almost made it to 101. I saw Crenshaw yesterday and he said he was going to stand up and do 10 minutes of Jackie Burke stories at the dinner tonight. Good. Good. Um, but when it comes to the knowledge of Augusta national, nobody knows it better than Tiger. And, um, you know, over the last couple of years, we obviously saw that huge comeback win in 2019, but we've seen some really good performances since then too. Um, so you never know. We need a healthy yeah. Tiger. We need good weather. We need warm, good weather for him. Yeah. yeah. And well, the, you, you mentioned that he played with uh, Will Zalatoris yesterday. Yeah. And I heard in an interview this morning early, off the record, they asked Zalatoris, what did y'all talk about? And he didn't talk about the greens, ball position, playing Augusta. They, he said, we talked more about our backs. Well, maybe that was that's <laughs> well. That's, they're both. That's no. what we do when we get older. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten there yet, have I? <laughs> uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, we're uh, you're going to head out to the course today, both of you, and go and check things out. Frank's going to give us a detailed report of the seventeen thousand dollar hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drink you, the hospitality tent you, you, today. You, okay. You, who are you guys? Ta- you, I've already said I'm taking Scheffler. I'm going to take Thigala as one to well, watch. You, and I got a story about Bryson DeChambeau that I wanted to tell you, but I want to hear who Diane's yeah. going at uh, in this well, tournament. I, uh, I, I think it's a moving target. We don't have to. You don't have to. It's not official because it's not, t- I haven't Tuesday. Decided, Tuesday. I haven't settled yet. I really do like Wyndham Clark this week. Um, the only thing that for me is against. He's not going. My head is. My head is doing I'm this. It's not going to happen so. with, the, so. with the first timer. But I do. Uh, I like I actually as um and I don't have the odds in front of me right now. I do want to see them for um Akshay Batia after how he played last week. 
I um, but he they did some damage to himself in that fist pump. Oh, the most himself. Over story ever, isn't it? That he like hurt himself by he has a hangnail. <laughs> well, I'm sure. I'm sure. I didn't watch the final, but I'm sure everyone knows this. But he's the first graduate from Drop Trip Putt, right? Nice. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's really, cool. Really cool. That is cool. Yeah. Well, I had a young. I had a young man named uh, Jesse Linden, who was a 12 year old boy from Australia, who flew over and he qualified at Champions Club. And he was in the drive chip putt. He's a star player from Australia. And uh, he finished fifth in his division. One of the guys ahead of him chipped in on the, and that, that, that was tough to overcome. But mm-hmm. I took them on a walk on the back nine. Yes. And that was fun to, to walk with his family on the back nine uh, with his whole family. From you know what? I want to go, uh, this is off of Augusta for one moment. I want to go to the West coast with this guy. And I want to play beside him at Riviera where he won the PGA championship. Well, they've, They've lengthened the course, Frank. We won't be quite where I was I'll back in the day. Way up. Yeah. Way up. We might have to play the But I would, would love I would love to have you walk me through your your on the course, walk that. me through yeah. your, your we, championship. That would be cool. We, we didn't have you play, done that? Diane, well, we walked yeah, Diane, through Vienna. Yeah, and we, we yeah. walked through all the holes. So that was cool. Yeah. So that'll be fun. And 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 it's fun to walk with him out at and we've done this at, at the players' championship also, walked with Elk around and he said i hit it here on this day and my thought process was hit it here on this day and it's just very interesting to get in to a head to the head of a major champion well, it's just oh. i just love walking a golf course with a professional golfer because their perspective is so different um, and it's like with elk i've walked i guess the national with elk many times now and yeah. it's just a completely different perspective um when you get to pick the brains of somebody who knows what they're talking about well, one of the reasons we all get so excited about the Masters, we all know the holes, and we all mm-hmm. we all instinctively know whether you've played it or not. We sort of know where you're not right. supposed to go. Yeah, and it's interesting to see the players if they can strategize themselves to get into the area where where it'll work. <clears throat> I will say something about that was interesting. Bryson Dijam, I was standing near the first tee yesterday, and Bryson grabbed me and said hello, and I said, "What are you doing?" And he said, "I'm going to go play." And I said, "Great, I'm coming over to watch." So we went over the first tee. This was at four o'clock. He was going to play a quick nine. He was waiting for the fairway to clear, and he had his three wood out, and he was swinging it, and everyone around me was guessing, oh, that looks like a steel shaft. That's weird, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, he, you know, hit him three wood up there. I was thinking, well, I wonder why he's not hitting driver because, he, you know, he hits it so far, but three wood was in good shape. And then an interesting thing happened. He took another ball out. When he took the other ball out, everyone on the first tee, 10 deep on both sides, started Yelling out, Ruin, take the driver, hit the driver, Bryce. I want to see the driver. <laughs> and they all started clapping. He took the head cover off the driver. I turned to the two guys I was with and I said, Our commissioner needs to be standing there because all these people, they don't care that he's on live. They want to see him. They want play. to see him. Absolutely. And he took his driver out and he hit a drive. And that bunker on the right is 322 to carry. So that ball was still about not going up, not going down, but was still about level with. Uh, altitude about ooh, 150 feet, still going, wow. and those people cheered him walking off that tee. And absolutely, I said, we need to do something here because they, they, the fans want to see it. They want, the they want to see action. great golf and great golfers and great competition, and so that's I, what we all deserve as as patrons or fans. So normally speaking, we, everyone yeah. agrees on that now. Like John Ram has said that, Rory's even said that. Like we just need to find a way to get everyone together. Um, so he's my, he's my dark horse. He's okay. my dark horse. I'm jumping in because the field is spread so much on this show. Normally, you I'll be telling you of a dark horse that's like, oh, they got to try to find his name. Yeah. But because it's so spread eagle, a good player is going to have to be a dark horse. So yeah. I'm watching, I'm keeping an eye on Bryson DJ. Mm-hmm. Oh, this Interesting. I've got three other live guys that I want to talk about. Um, first of all, Cam Smith withdrew last week. I love that he withdrew from the live event, but he still walked away with nearly $17,000. Was that because his team was in the money, or I, I looked at the his team the money, his and team. I was like, "Wow, that the was team, a yeah, team, yeah." Um, yeah was his team? But you can. It's, a, it's a good gig over there. It's a good gig it's over there. Yeah, it is. From what I've heard. Can, can we get a, a PGA Tour champion style uh, yeah. group and run no, out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was okay, food poisoning, wasn't it? You you heard yeah. that it was food poisoning, so it wasn't an injury. And Cam Smith obviously has played well here, major champion too. So, and tell him what happened to you about Cam Smith. Tell him, tell him what you said. Okay, all right. So um, he got he got duped. I got duped on, on the first of April 
when I get the text oh, with the picture of Cam without his mullet. And he, he tells said, me, oh, and I, I, I said, he, he said he shaved it off. I said, did you see he shaved it off? Because I have a picture of Cam and I on the roof of Doral after the tournament a couple of years ago at Live Event. And, and I, I, said, I was yeah, due. Yeah, it was AI. I said, I said oh, you got AI. Yeah. I got AI. Well, yeah. that's yeah. a good one. Um, Rick's Kepka, who we always have an eye on when it comes to majors. Have you seen him this week? Because I know you like to. Well, as you know, not yet, but I've got a, a list here of players, Diane, that are still in the dog pound. That it's like a wolf pack chasing down the top five, and he's in that. I've got Thagala in there, uh, Joaquin Neiman, very, very high on a lot of people's list. Kepka, of course, winning Clark. Some initials in there. JT Thomas Smith Hatton is keeps showing up in a bunch of our models. Bryson's Aberg's in there, and Dustin Johnson. I saw DJ yesterday. Uh, he looks so strong, that guy. I've never seen anyone look strong. Well, that was my <laughs> third name that I was about to ask you about is Dustin Johnson, who's just like flying solo under the radar right now. Um, and we forget that, you know, obviously he's he's back. He's achieved incredible things in his career. He's won the Masters before. Um, and sometimes I like the fact that Dustin is just a... Uh, very chill, very relaxed. There really isn't any drama surrounding him. He just goes out there and he gets it done. Yes, and I think all things being said that we've said in this podcast, <clears throat> all the pressure sits on Scheffler. Everyone else has no pressure. The second amount of pressure, most pressure would be on Rory because he's trying to go for the Grand Slam. Yeah. There is no pressure on anyone else because of this chasm, as Frank said, of where Scheffler sits on top of the pile. Yeah. And everyone else feels like, you know, I got to really just concentrate here on getting my game in shape because it's a big gap. It's a big gap to the guys that are just, you know, out of the dog pound, we're calling it today, to get into the top 10. I had why, you know, Will Zalatoris, can he finish in the top 10 with his, where he's coming from? It's a less than 5% chance, just on probability the way he plays. Yeah. So some people won't believe that, but it's, it is what it is. Um, it's the Masters. I'm thinking of names that I want to talk to you about, but Elk, I know you're going to have an opinion on this. Um, Victor Hovland, who seems to be tampering <laughs> with everything right now. Like, he just <laughs> won the FedEx Cup last year. I know. And he is just making all these changes in this, like, what seems like a strive for total perfection right now. And, you know, it doesn't seem to be working um, to his advantage at all. And I'm not doing this in front of you. I'm looking for his name on my magic little list here. But what's he coming into with strokes gained? Like two, it's isn't it? Way down. Like way, way down. Way down. Right way there. down. And so, again, for those, there he is, 2.3 strokes gained. Looking, stacking that up against guys that are coming in with, just to reiterate what I said, Victor, who I love, made a bunch of changes, got rid of Joe Mayo and his chipping coach, went over and, and essentially hired Joe Mayo's partner, my friend, uh, ex tour player Grant Waite, comes into this tournament with not much form, 50th place, 46, 22nd, made five cuts in a row, but no no action, comes in with 2.8 strokes gained form coming in, sits one and a half strokes a day behind a top 10 in this tournament. Right. So he's got work to do, and it's easy to – Look at his out. He's got an outfit. Did you see he's posted? It's got the big azalea that's yeah. this big on it. Yeah. yeah. You, you could pull that off, man. No, I don't think so. No, okay. I, don't, I don't do flowers. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. I like my black and white. Yes. And now I've got my arm around you with your. Oh, jeez. So there'll, there'll be talking. <laughs> yeah. There'll be conversation so, in the clubhouse. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've gone through um, what our kind of strategy is for picks this week. Um, we've had a look at the stats. We've talked about a whole heap of names um, that we think are either going to be challenging for the green jacket or falling out. I told you Sergio was playing good, didn't I? I said yes, Sergio, yeah, did Sergio yeah. plays so good at this tournament yeah. and his putting is stabilized. Yeah. Runner up in Mexico on live, very close to the lead in Doral. It'll be a harder course at Doral last week than it will be here almost as, you know, water everywhere, wind, yeah. all that. So stabilize the putting. Watch out for that one. I'm talking about the, the bottom end here of the top 10. Okay. All right. Well, you guys are going to head out to the course again today. Um, Elk, you're going to be following some more guys, having a look at uh, some other players. And we may have to do a re-mini show tomorrow to 
up this a little bit. Up and probably need to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, again, we, so. we didn't really talk about odds. We have to make our make our picks as well. But as I said, I'm I'm still very undecided. I feel like I have a, a bit more research that I need to do before I can decide who my picks are going to be. Yep. Well, you've got mine, Scheffler, Thagala, and Bryson as of today. Okay. Thagala would be the one to one to watch, and then Bryson would be the dark horse. Oh, well, if I was going to make my absolute picks um, right now, oh, I think I would do Brooks Kepka as my winner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do Wyndham Clark. I'm definitely going to throw him into the she's, middle. She is stuck on She's stuck on Wyndham Clark. Yeah, she's stuck on Do, do you have a, it, yeah. a crush on Wyndham? Is that what it is? <laughs> What is this? I finished runner up at Bay Hill and then runner up at the players. Like, there's no and, 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 and one and one pebble and one, one, yeah, one exactly. pebble. Yeah, yeah. So there's a few guys that are hotter when it comes to form than Wyndham. And then, oh my gosh, who am I looking at down the bottom? Who am I? Shane Lowry. Of course, of she's gonna, course, she's, she's got to go, 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 go. She's got to go. She's got to go across. Brethren, playing, across from across the guy pond. playing well has experience. Hatton, Hatton's playing a lot better. Yeah, and he's across the pond. I'm, I'm not picking. I'm picking that. I know. See, <laughs> Scottish people, they never look down. They only look across. Across, yeah, <laughs> only look across. just across. Yeah. Uh -huh. we do, have any, do we have any Scots in the field this week? I don't think we do. Nope. So nope. my uh, my loyalty will lie with the Irishman in that sense. Well, okay. Well, it's good to get back on with you two uh, characters. Okay. It's good to have the band back together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Characters. Yeah. Okay. The, the invitation's well, open. Get I'm on the plane. Jealous. Come on. Um, my, I have one question left to ask, Elk. The merch. What did you see? Where have you yeah. been? You know, the hot item again is the... Sam, what's the hot item? It's a little teddy bear. The deal. gnome. The gnome. The gnome. The gnome. Um, Have you heard about the gnome? Goofy, the yeah. lawn ornament. Have you seen the gnome? Oh, no, that's goofy looking to me. Gretchen, Gretchen Zella bought two gnomes uh, last year. All, you know, yeah. got, got demolished online, eBay, because... She's the shopper. Was, that girl knows how to shop. <laughs> yeah, she was recruiting everybody yesterday to go get her a gnome. And I said, I'm not going to get you a gnome. I'm not going. I'm not going to. The news about merch this year is and we've heard it from many of the patrons that are coming through here today or yesterday and today is the lines have been enormous because there are a lot of first time ticket holders that have come oh, this year won the lottery that won the lottery a yeah. lot of new people because they've disseminated it different differently geographically uh -huh. is how they're they're pushing the lottery out okay so and I won't get too deep in the weeds on that but back to the matter is a lot of new people so everybody was in line and it, it's just a 2 hour wait Craziness. Good looking, good looking lady stuff in the men's pro shop. Uh, That's where that right. is the place. That's the the secret yeah. spot. It was a white cashmere cardigan that had all the old masses emblems all over it. Wow. Don't know what age preference it would be. It was is that what's in the bag there for Diane? Is it, it, was all, it was awesome uh, looking, you know, thing. Talking of a uh, gifts for Diane, what did you say at the beginning of the show about a ticket that you may have available, Frank? Uh, it's uh, seventeen right over there. Seventeen thousand dollar ticket. If, if kids under two get in for free, you can give me that ticket. I can take my baby. We can go and hang out. Oh, so you're going to leave Frank out? You're well, not going to go with me over there. Is actually going to Vegas this week for a bachelor party. If you can believe it. So, well then, tell him you come to see Uncle well, Frank. Give him our tips. Give him, give him our tips. Put some, yeah. put some money down. Give him our tips. So yeah. like, of all the weekends that you can be going, like the the groom is clearly not a golf fan. If you pick Masters weekend to go away, but um, Sunday they have a free day, and Garrett's like, I'm going to sit in the sports book and oh, I'm I just going to watch Masters all day. Like, what a, I know where he's going to be. Yeah, yeah, he's going to. I'll be checking the credit card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Well, as I said, guys, anyone got a ticket, then, uh, then call me because I can drive and be there. <laughs> well, come on. I'm telling you, come on. We can, we can validate this after the not, show. I'm not paying $17,000. Well, <laughs> you don't have to pay. It's free to you. Oh, silly. my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to go out and I'm going to go out and, and scout it all out. I'm going to walk the front nine today, try to find a couple of good players to follow and report all this back to you and more. Okay. And so, more. Sounds good. And more. Sound. More to come. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. I will talk to you soon. You too. Thanks. Thanks.